Polarization. Are they using tips from Lucifer to organize America and the world? Well, we continue our conversation about an attempt for some to organize America and the world. It's amazingly eerie how seemingly most every point Saul Alinsky makes in his book Rules for Radicals for Community Organizers seems to be demonstrated in the actions that are being taken place by some, including historically President Trump, Hillary Clinton, and others as well. The fundamental transformation of a nation? Well, you're going to find out how it fits in that book. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. So today is the first day of the Affordable Health Care Act, also known as the Obamacare, that's brought into uh, law and uh, the, the Congress and the Senate are wanting to, to fund it. So I guess it started today. But in addition, though, no, nope, actually, they actually are, are refusing to fund it. Right. Congress is. And so we are, the government's on shutdown today. Yeah. Shut down today. And the reason why, this is all together. This is a convergence. We're not telling you, like, imagine if you're, if you're in the center of something and all these little um, rays of information are shooting out from that one place. No, this is all over layering light that I'm talking to you about because this all goes together in regards to it's being organized. It's being organized. This mm. is timing. Listen, God has shown me. You can go back to VFN Torch. Go to VFNTV.com. And you can see, you can click on prophecies, and you can see where God has shown us what's going to happen to the economy, what's going to happen to paper money, mm -hmm. and this whole thing's being set up. And we're going to talk more about that in the first and second hour, talking about what does organization look like? What is, you know, and, and just because you're organizing something doesn't mean it's bad. So we're beginning to explore. But the first thing we found out yesterday, if you missed the last half hour of the extra hour yesterday, was that the tips that are being used according to um, Marshall Gantz, who was being interviewed by Bill Moyer, Bill Moyer on Bill Moyer and Company on PBS, you can see the public broadcasting service. You can see this on the VFN Torch. They're actually quote they're actually using Lucifer for tips, you know. And uh, uh, you may think if you've seen the VFN Torch, it's like, oh man, they're going out there. Why would they even say uh, using Lucifer for tips on how to organize America and the world? Uh, really? I mean, that's mm -hmm. the question. I mean, think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody is using Lucifer. For a, I don't know, for an epicenter of change, um, you got to say somebody's using Lucifer as tips if they're if they are if they're not. Right. And uh, and I just want to say out front too that you know we could have put a man in a suit, you know, when they were putting together the post on the VF and torch. And you've got to hear the first part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. But that is that when you see what's described, what Lucifer looks like, what what he looks like. You know, Pat talked to us, what has God shown you when, when he's showing you, because, you know, the Lord's given you the ability to see, it's interesting, the realm you see and the realm that I see. <laughs> we all come together, we see, it's like, I'm glad I don't see your realm, yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. But tell me what, you know, the things that you've seen, how the enemy, how the Lord has revealed to you the enemy in, in, in regards to Satan. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, several times I've seen images of, you know, demonic giants and demons and even Satan himself. I've seen, you know, uh, just... I mean, lizard-like looking skin. I've seen the teeth. I've seen uh, I've seen Satan. He's just red color with the horns coming out of his head. I mean, I, it's freaky stuff. I mean, I've seen it all. Well, you think about it. You know, you know, the world's been around for a little bit, mm -hmm. and you didn't talk to anybody, right? That was around a thousand years ago, right? No, I didn't. Are you sure now? Are you positive? I'm pretty sure I wasn't there. You know, I've seen some actresses <laughs> that said they were like dogs in past lives right, and cats right. and birds and stuff. Okay, so. That means then the same one that they paint and they show and they diagram a thousand years ago or you know two thousand years ago, mm -hmm. he's the same devil as he was. I mean that's, that's the way that God describes him, right? Mm -hmm. And and so when we when you when you saw no when they were working on putting together that post for you our listeners to be able to read and to share. By the way, you can go to the VFN TV app, you know, and you can share it. You push a button to share, and that exact. Mm -hmm. Um, segment, just that one segment, you can send it to anybody in the world and they can click on it immediately, no matter where they get on their computers or wherever or their phones and they push, begin to listen to it. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. 
So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this and look what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we want to bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. So that picture, mm-hmm. that picture is not far fetched. No, it's not. That's exactly what I saw. And you look at the teeth are like shaved down to like, yeah, like, like points. points. Yeah, like fangs. Yeah, yeah, fangs and the horns coming out like coming a ram. Out forehead, yeah. Coming out of his head and all that. And so, you know, don't, you know, I would think if I saw that, listen, listen, if anybody in Pack could tell you, I used to go, what? Where is this AM radio stuff coming from? Right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, turn that stuff off, you know, yeah. because it seemed like they were far fetching, really, truly. Anyway, we just won't talk about it. But, but, but we want to be able to, we're not going to filter out what God's showing us. Right. And um, so you have to understand how evil Satan is. And he even looks evil. Mm-hmm. And he hates God. God, by the way, God hates Satan. <laughs> and you're creating the image and the likeness of God. Mm-hmm. And Satan loves darkness and uses darkness and he holds people captive to do his will. Do you really want to partner with this, this, this hater of God? in the context of that. And do you want to use his concepts, his concepts to be able to organize the earth and organize your nation? Do you really want to do that? And uh, what we're going to discover today is we're going to be talking about it more and more is, um, you know, is America being organized? Is the world being organized? And, you know, prophetically, of course, it is going to be. And you always want to project. I mean, if you have any kind of sense of you don't want to suffer much, I mean, you always want to project, man, it's going to be real tough for those guys one day. <laughs> oh, those poor guys, you know. All right, all right. I got a chariot that's going to swing down and pick me up. Swing low, sweet <laughs> chariot. And so in the context of that, but the truth is, you know, this could be the generation. Yeah. This could be, if, you, if we actually were reading our Bibles and we're meditating on the Word of God and allowing God to speak to us, which according to George Barnard, of course, we always say it, but you need to hear it so you move out of it. 97% really are not doing that. They call themselves Christians. And so um, it's okay. They're not tithing either. So, hey, it looks like everything's consistent. They are not, you know, right. I'm not honoring God, not reading about God, not praying to God. It's like, anyway, so in the context, it's not all right. I was just being cynical. Anyway, so in the context of that, that that so many things are being fulfilled so, so, um, so uh, rapidly that you know, we can't even tell you how quickly it's happening. We're just trying to just skim the cream off the top and just says, I don't know, run for your lives. <laughs> don't get on the train, you know. Stop. Don't buy into the condos. They're ghettos. Don't buy into that. They're ghettos. They're like to, they're, listen, when you, when you used to be able to buy washing powders, for example, based on what I heard, in a big, huge box, and what they found out was something like 80% of the washing powders was nothing. It was nothing. It was inert, just fluff. Wow. And the, the real stuff in there was probably maybe about 20%. I'm just roughly mm-hmm. estimating it. And so they finally just said, you know, let's just sell it in the concentrated form. In other words, they were just selling fluff. Right. They were just selling fluff. And so what they did was they concentrated the washing powder. So you can get, you know, you think about, you can, you can, you can get a glass of orange juice and you can drink the orange juice or you could take the lemon that was put in the water and just have just the lemon alone. So that's concentrated. Uh-huh. It's like concentrated, which means all the lemons are together. Well, when you hear something about concentration camps, that means we're going to bring you all together. Right. And it's going to be just like a thick batch of Christians and Jews and stuff. And mm. uh, don't worry about it. We're going to put guards around you and lord over you and protect you. So that you can be safe because we created a whole storm against you. Right. We, we have people hating on you right now. And... And we're going to protect you from the storm that we created. And isn't that just wonderful? Right. You know, and with our big box of popcorn and drink. Okay, great. Oh, cool. <laughs> we got gondos in the camp. Right. And of course it won't be, you know, the camp, you understand that just, it was just a piece of property that was set up to concentrate people. So you, you think about it in the context of the evil that it was, and you're reading ahead because you have the history to read, but listen, our history is not fully re- written yet. Right. And let it be said of us that we did everything within the leadership of God leadership in our life to be the light in the midst of our generation that we just didn't lay down, but we did like Tyndall and begin to transcribe. And we did like, um, 
um, others who um, had just paid the price to be able to put the Geneva Bible together and to the pilgrims that just, you know, pushed their way to a land that they could raise their hands and say, Jesus is Lord, you know, and one nation under God. So we're going to be talking about these things, but I just want to continue uh, the interview. When we're talking about, you know, what's going on, is America being organized? Is America being organized? And is the world being organized? And if it is, what do we as believers, how do we respond to this? And what we ended off yesterday and the first beginning of this conversation, it's just a conversation, you know, is, and we're exploring, we're letting God just kind of lead us in this and, uh, and understand the context of this. We're not saying that um, uh, people are bad or this going on. Like we're just saying, hey, this is what's going on, you know? And quite often what happens anyway, the people that are being used to do dark things, they see it, they're convinced that this is good for the good thing. And so in their mind outside of God, they, they're really trying to do something well, mm-hmm. but you, they won't know until they know Jesus had the light in their life that, that right. you know, my goodness, I am actually trying to be God. Mm. And so we're going to begin, you know, organizing and organizing is not wrong. I mean, you think about it. I mean, I mean, Pat used to be a real organized person. Used to be. <laughs> used to be. I mean, he had his, he'd take his change out of his pocket and he'd stack his quarters up, his nickels up, his dimes up and his <laughs> pennies up. And uh, now Steve does that. <laughs> <laughs> I see him laughing in the background back over there, right? No. Um, by the way, if you missed the glory, the stories about the glory of God manifesting, you got to catch them. They're on the VFN torch yesterday's program. God is healing. God's delivering. God still, God sits on his throne and loves you and has a plan for your life. You can find out more at the VFN torch. Go to VFNTV.com. But, you know, understand this, that, so what's going on? I mean, if it's being organized, it doesn't mean it's bad. As a matter of fact, as a leader... When you elect a president and a congressman and a senator um, and um, judges, for example, get appointed and some get elected, it's the point to kind of keep things organized and keep things. So it's not wrong to, to I think it's kind of anal to stack your quarters. Yeah, I think it's kind of a little overboard, <laughs> you know, and to iron your socks. That's a little bit too much. <laughs> but hey, whatever, you know, if you just know underneath your pant leg, you got a sock with no wrinkle in it, that's totally okay. All right. But all, all humor aside, I hope that's aside, and I hope that was humor. Anyway, so the that um, are we being organized? And as we begin to look at this, you hear about the um, one of the men that was working on um, working in the year in America for years to help organize uh, workers and organize Americans um, is Marshall Gantz. And he's being interviewed by Bill Moyer on Bill Moyer and company on PBS. And you can see this, you go to VFN torch and, and go right to see this entire interview. But I want to be able, want you to be able to hear again, because, um, we're looking at, and going to be talking about in detail today, uh, a book, a book that he quotes from, uh, by Saul Alinsky. Oh. Isn't it interesting that interesting. Saul was persecuting the church and then he encountered God and became Paul. Mm. Isn't it interesting? That is. He was headed to Damascus right. to organize the people against the people of the way. And then I made Saul. Yeah. Interesting. Alinsky. Anyway, so <laughs> the um and so and, and and Marshall has done some pretty cool things. And me, as you heard earlier, and you might not have caught the first part and you need to catch it, you know, I used to be a community organizer. Mm-hmm. I I've been in the training. I've been to um, Applegate, California, with the Pacific Institute of Community Organizing. You know, I, I walk with those from Berkeley, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and understand some of the context of it. And but so the things that are being said by some of them are just good. I mean, it's really good. They're really trying to help bring uh, justice for all. I mean, think mm-hmm. about even with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who he actually was biblically sound and constitutionally correct. Mm-hmm. He stayed in the context of God, of the humility before God and uh, before man and walked out something so powerful. He set an example for us mm-hmm. as a man of God, which I believe is an apostle, that how to, 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 to hold America to what's on the paper, the Constitution, while living up to the paper, which is the Word of God, under God and humility. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can find out more about that on yesterday's segment as well. But, and so um, 
I want you to hear this. So he's talking about different ways to organize. Uh, and you can hear more about yesterday. And But he's talking about social movements and social movements matter and uh, how movements build and where Yes, We Can came from. And that actually came from a, the, the Farmers Workers uh, Union that started off uh, in the Southwest. And Marshall Gantz was part of that, in which, which they had this horrific law that was wouldn't allow them to be able to organize to get fair wages uh in that area he's done some great things and um so harry's talking though about um uh sal alinsky saul alinsky let's mm. just call him saul alinsky right i wish we were to call him saul It'll help us out to kind of yeah. heard him a book that was written called um he wrote a book called rules of rules for radicals rules for radicals um, something like Bill Ayers and mm -hmm. uh, the um, uh, uh, Underground, and he talks about all these in his books. As a matter of fact, I was reading it last night, just you know, going through it and just mm -hmm. kind of getting some. And and, and he's, he's he's saying, you know, what we've learned, and that's crazy. We don't need to do that kind of stuff. What we got to do is get into the structure, mm -hmm. get into the structure, and become the congressman, become the senator, become the president. We right. got to get in there, and that's right. where we're going to do things. We're going to begin to change the paradigm that way, and we got to shift our organization, organizing to um, the middle class, which is the the bigger part of it. And as a matter of fact, we come back. I'm going to begin to uh, hear. You're going to hear this from Marshall Gantz, and we're going to begin the conversation. Is America being organized? And it, is the world being organized? And if it is, how do we as a church respond to it? And we wanted to start off with where we ended off uh, yesterday in hearing Marshall Gantz being interviewed by Bill Moore as he talks about organizers. And in the context of that, he said um, that um, what community organizers do. And he talks about polarization. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about that because we're seeing a lot of polarization going on right now. And, and it's, it's being very successful and polarizing and hey you know if that's what they're they're organizing and that's going if it's a positive thing that's one thing but uh in regards to it is we don't as the church we don't need to be naive as christians we don't need to be naive to what's mm -hmm. going on right so let's hear what what uh marshall gans is saying to bill moyer on his bill moyer and company show and you can see it in its entirety i go into the vfntv.com click on the vfn torch and then that will carry you right directly to bill moyer's show Listen, this is Marshall Gantz talking about community organizers and how they do things. And notice he's going to quote from, this is what we're going to talk about today, uh, Rules for Radicals, Saul Alinsky's book, Rules for Radicals. Listen up. And uh, I think that uh, those of us who uh, wanted to do more about economic justice and immigration and climate change needed to do more. We had to be contentious. That's how it works. It's like this idea that contentiousness is somehow alien to democracy oh, yeah. and that consensus is somehow what democracy is about and that polarization is bad. Paralysis is bad. But, you know, it's like Saul Alinsky said, organizers have to be well-integrated schizoids because you have to polarize to mobilize and depolarize to settle. But without polarizing, you're never going to mobilize anything. And yeah, then there's a time to negotiate. And I think we're really screwed up on that. And that's, that's so, that's, you're looking at the, listen to Marshall Gantz, and he's ex explaining about, and this is, this is a man who's given his life, mm. his life, and how to walk out organ, community organizing. And he teaches it. And he teaches it, at, I believe, at, um, I can't tell you right now, but it's either Harvard or Yale. And, um, and he's gone and traveled, and he's done some real successful um, organizing bringing justice to some folks and stuff. Mm -hmm. But right now, and what you would have heard earlier yesterday, that the um, the uh, president, um, who also was a community organizer, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I was too, that he um, hired him or brought him into his campaign to help him organize. Well, mm -hmm. of course. I mean, that's like we said, it's like you play for the Saints football team and you decide you're going to run for a political office or something. It wouldn't be surprising to find out another player on the, on the New Orleans Saints was actually helping you with your campaign. There's nothing wrong with that at all. As a matter right. of fact, and not only that, that uh, you want somebody that can organize to be in your, your political campaign or mm -hmm. whatever. So that, that was probably real wise to do that. But then you find out, you know, in, the, in the regards to, but 
So yeah, I mean, it looks like things are being organized, but what are they being organized for? And um, when you read uh, Rules for Radicals, and I encourage you to, to read, it's time to, to begin to just don't take people's word for it. Don't take our word for it. You know, go in the word of God. Find out yourself. Get, get, get the Quran. Read it. You know, read the Book of Mormon. You know, read Rules for Radicals. Get knowledge about what's going on. And quit just trying to get everything in sound bites and get informed. You'll be really surprised how easy it is to make clear decisions when you find out people, what's happening right now, it is in our face. It's not a secret. It's happening right in front of our face. We're being organized, it looks like. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is we're being organized for good or bad. So he, he quotes from Sal or Saul Alinsky in his book, Bulls for Radicals. But you have to understand that book, when you open the front cover of the book and look in the inside cover, it's dedicated to the very first one that ever get, had, had rebelled and in default got his own kingdom, mm-hmm. Lucifer. All right. So he's quoting, he's taking tips from Lucifer about how to organize. Well, that's not, you know, I mean, the church wouldn't do that. You know, Christians aren't supposed to do that, you know, in regards to you know, those that follow Jesus. Right. But you think about Satan was offering Jesus, he says, listen, I'll give you these kingdoms. Listen, I can organize a few things for you, put some things together. Mm-hmm. You know, you just about, I mean, he was trying to organize a life for Jesus, wasn't he, in the, in the right. wilderness. So I can organize this thing for you. But, of course, Jesus was loyal to God, mm-hmm. to his father. And so we're going to begin to talk about, you know, what is this uh, Solinsky and this particular book called um, Radical uh, Rules for Radicals was written, I believe, by uh, Sal Alinsky while he was in jail for his rebellion against um, um, society, you know, mm-hmm. government. And um, so when you think about I think about when I was reading last night um, in, in uh, the book Rules for Radicals, that polarization, and we'll talk more about the basic uh, rules here, but we'll break them down and we'll say what a rule is, and then we'll look at what does is, what is God's word say about that rule for us. Mm-hmm. Now they can do, we're not saying that somebody can't do that. But we're going to say, what do we do as Christians? And the last thing we need to do, we've got to stop doing, is telling people who are not Christians, who never said they wanted to follow Christ, trying to tell them what to do. We're becoming, you know, some historical, if you look back at religion, crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Versus, no, that's not, you know, we honor people's decision. If they say they don't want to follow God, if they don't want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life, and they don't want to read the Word of God in the Bible, you just... You just dust the dust off your feet and move on. You don't say negative things about them. You don't hate on them. You don't lie to them and tell them that God doesn't love them because Mm -hmm. God does love them. And even if they walk away from him like the rich young ruler did, it says, but Jesus still loved them. That's the message that we got to be able to carry. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And, but in the context of, of what, what happens is, and we'll talk more about it, but the world, you have to understand the word polarization because in polarization, when you're polarized, it begins to, um, uh, I mean, think about north and north and south would be straight up and down, and east and west is horizontal, right? Right. So those are exact polarizations of each other. So when you say polarize, one person is yes and one person is no. When you say polarize an orga- organizations, then you would say some organizations are north and south, and some of them are east and west. They're exact opposites. Mm-hmm. And you and so one of the rules you'll find out is to in organizing a community, organizing. Um, I mean, think about it. Even think about rebellious children who are trying to um, organize the family in the way they wanted to go. They will polarize the mother and the father against each other, mm-hmm. and they'll have the mother at north and south, and have the father at east and west, mm-hmm. and then they'll play those two. And they'll push them to the limit, and then they'll finally get what they want, and all of a sudden everything's back to normal again. All right. That is that is tips from Lucifer how to bring orga- uh, to, to organize for a negative way. Mm-hmm. So it's not nothing new; it's been happening since day one. But the thing about it is, as Christians, what you know, we have to be careful and understand that's not what we do in the context of that. And but so the polarization right now, what you're looking at, and people are talking about the news, and they're just they're thinking this is insane. They just scream at their DV. This is insane. <laughs> or they, they read a post. This is insane. No, it's not insane. It's polarization. 
It's polarization where you have America's being polarized in regards to other nations. All of a sudden, we're put at some adversarial viewpoint to the other nations in the world with the apology tour. And all of a sudden, America is the one causing all the problems. Mm -hmm. Our soldiers and our military has been polarized in regards to who they are in the context of the rest of the world. And all of a sudden, these heroes now, they're, they're being told in some, some instances, in some case, that they're actually were causing problems. And they're the ones that just listened to the direction of the leadership and went and served the commander-in-chief, you know. Right. But now they're polarized. Then you look at marriage, and marriage is polarized. Well, you have some people that say marriage is this, and some people say marriage is that. And it's like, listen, this is what an organizer wants. An organizer's success is when things do get polarized. This is a great environment for chaos and confusion where, the, where someone comes in and begins to say, okay, here's the new order. Here, I don't know. Here's a new world order. Think mm. about that. Here's wow. a new order. Let's just come in. And when you have wars, when wars happen, boundaries uh, boundaries change, borders change, governments change, the DNA of how things operate change. And so that the, the, the climactical point of, of, of organizing, there's conflict. And that's what, that's what Bill Gantz was talking about. That's what, if you listen to the first part, that's what he was talking about in the context of that. He said, there's contention. Well, you know, that proverb says where there's, where there's contention, there's pride. And so, um, in the end of this interview, and we're not going to play the end of this interview, but you can see the whole interview by going to vfntv.com, click on the torch and just watch it. It'll carry you right to Bill Moyer's um, direct uh, broadcast of it. As he says, if you're not for yourself, who will be for you? Mm -hmm. And then it's, and he says, and if all you are is for you, then what good is that? Right. What good is that? And, um, so then why not be for you and for others? And the truth is, as Christians, we're not for ourselves. We deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow mm -hmm. the Lord. And we're for him and for others. But we deny ourselves. So it's not about, and that's the big thing. You know, most, most people buy into these community organizing and when it's used in the evil way because I get something out of it. Mm -hmm. I get something out of this. What's in it for me? And, um, and with that, um, that's twisted because now you're looking at pride. Mm -hmm. You're looking at pride, and pride comes before a fall. a fall. And so, America's being polarized. Religion's being polarized. The Middle East is being polarized. Israel and uh, Islam's being polarized. And uh, our health is being polarized with the health care act. All is being polarized. We're going to talk more about this in the extra hour. You got to catch it. We're going to continue this conversation and get into the meat of this polarization. So we're continuing the conversation about is America being organized? Is the nation, is the world being organized? And if it is, what do we do? How do we respond as Christians? And, and do we change the world? Do we change ourselves and be the light that God's called us to be in it? Also, um, in the news today, um, uh, today in the news today is, um, Benjamin Netanyahu, prime minister, uh, Netanyahu is, uh, going to the United Nations to speak today. Last time he went, I believe, to the United Nations, he was talking about a bomb. He drew a cartoon caricature of a bomb mm -hmm. and said that when they get to this line, when Iran gets to this line, then that's when it's gone too far and right. we have to react to that. The red line. Red line, yeah. And then since then, the red line has been talked about to the point where they say that our, our president, America, has drawn a red line mm -hmm. in regards to Syria and the chemical weapons. And all of a sudden, everything was pushed to the point where we have presently, based on my understanding, we have a battleships in the Mediterranean on the west coast of Iran, of, um, of west coast of Israel and Syria, of, uh, because we were going to, based on what our president was saying and what our secretary of state was saying, that we were going to bomb Damascus and um reportedly and what god had given me and you gotta go back and listen because mm -hmm. the lord had given me uh before it happened the time it was going to happen what he was going to say and this is going to happen right. right yeah sure did and um and so when we're t and so today israel jacob is speaking to the world that's what the united nations represents all the nations are gathered together remember mm -hmm. the valley of jehoshaphat all the nations will be gathered together in the valley of decision to be judged at jehoshaphat so all the nations are gathered together here in the uh, United Nations for Jacob, the Prime Minister of Israel, to speak. Um, and I don't know what it's going to say. I mean, it could be speaking as we're talking right now because uh, uh, maybe somebody can pull it up. 
But in the context of that, yesterday, I believe it was, he met with President Obama in the White House. And so you have President Obama and the Prime Minister of Israel meet in um, the White House, Prime Minister Netanyahu, about um, what is going on in the directions and about Iran. But at the same time, um, what Prime Minister Netanyahu was saying, we're talking about, this is all part of the conversation here. This is all part of the conversation. Is the world being organized? Is America being organized? Remember, America's 5% of the world's population. Why he's talking to Jacob, the one who's threatened to take Jacob out, why he's talking to Israel, the one who's threatening to take Israel out, to part of their actual constitution, if you would, or their their makeup in the supreme leader's makeup in um, what they're made up of in Iran is to destroy Jacob, to destroy Israel. And so while he is sitting in the White House, while America is sitting in the White House talking to Israel, we have battleships floating off the West Coast with guns pointed supposedly 90 miles north of Haifa, which is Haifa's in Israel. So Damascus, I mean, you're looking at just micro turning of a barrel to turn to Israel. So we actually have Israel surrounded on the West Coast. Iran has it surrounded on the eastern borders. And uh, Syria and Lebanon on the northern borders. You have Egypt on the southern borders down there. You have the Muslim, the whole Arab Spring surrounding it with the Arab League. And we're partnering with them. We're shaking the hand of the president of Iran, or at least sticking our hand out and they're rejecting us. But now we're actually writing letters back and forth. The news is, is reporting to, you know, Persia, to, uh, to Iran in the context of that. Um, well, now we're sitting with, my goodness, it looks like even Israel's being organized. It looks like it looks like the world and potentially um, led by our own president that he's organized Israel. He's polarized Israel. Mm-hmm. He's polarized. He's polarized um, um, the uh, the the Arab Spring. He's polarized Iran. Okay, they've got nuclear weapons. We're not going to do anything about it right now. Mm-hmm. He's polarized Assad, northern parts of the border right there. He's polarized the Muslim Brotherhood that's totally against uh, Israel's existence. He's polarized the whole area. He's organizing Israel, All right? right? Mm-hmm. Because you got to have contention, Marshall Gantz says, to be able to push them beyond the limits so that you can settle. And he goes, then, then you, yeah. after you polarize, then you depolarize and you settle. This is the thing about it. Let me, let me tell you, this, and we're talking about the church perspective is, you don't get you don't use Lucifer's tips for organizing. You're partnering with the devil when you do that. You're partnering with Satan against God, the apple of God's eye. It's not going to end up with those same techniques that worked in a neighborhood, that worked in a city, are not going to work against Israel. God is going to backlash that and he's going to come back and just whack any nation that tries to put their hand and think that you can push Israel into complying with anything outside of God's will. That's right. And so, but that's your, you have a polarization. And so it's, it's helpful to understand and the way that Marshall Gantz puts it, he says, and I believe that he's even quoting, um, Saul Alinsky in Rules for Radicals. He says, you have to be schizoid and you can find out the definition of that. We've got all these different words, but schizoid, in other words, you gotta be, you gotta be up. Yes. and no at the same time. And you look at the, you look at the president and the president truly is a community organizer and he's president. And by the way, as Christians, we need to honor him as the president. We need to honor him. Even Paul in chains stood before the king and honored the king as king and even talked about his accomplishments. And there's been some, some major accomplishments that our president has done and needs to be honored for that. And then he began to hopefully share the light with him that he would be one but just speaking against our president, you know, that doesn't, it's ungodly to be able to do that in the context of that. But you share the truth in regards to the light, and you can do that in America. But if it weren't in America, you still have to do it because of the First Amendment. But you can do it in a way that honors. And so we're looking at a community organizing concept according to, to Marshall Gantz, according to Sal Alinsky, according uh, to the practices that I learned is that uh, you first have to polarize everybody. And so, mm-hmm. and it's like, it's like, wait a minute, Israel's being polarized. Egypt got polarized. Syria's being polarized. I mean, every place except Iran 
is being polarized. Right. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And China's being polarized. The New York Stock Exchange got polarized. The banks got polarized. They became the, the enemy. Uh, the Catholic Church got polarized when they started talking about, you know, they can't pay for abortions in the health care bill. Mm -hmm. I mean, they totally changed the argument at that point. Health care, now the people that have health care and don't have health care, they became polarized and they were like put against each other. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Christians are being polarized against people who are not Christians. Um, Democrats are being polar polarized against Republicans and whatever other parties they have out there. The these other conservative, I mean, everybody's, everything's being polarized in this huge contention. Well, the next procedure, according to one of the master organizers, Marshall Gantz says, once you get that contention going and you push things to their limit, he says, then, that's T-H-E-N, then you depolarize and you settle. Right. And you think about it, that... Um, and negotiating when you're negotiating with people, that's just kind of a normal thing. It's not an abnormal thing in regards to, you know, shoot for the stars and land on the moon. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't go in there to your boss and, uh, and say in the context of it, if it's within the means of, of it and you're a good employee, you can, you know, you say, Hey, you know, if you're really needing to walk out of there with, with so much an hour or so much in your salary to be able to take care of the family's needs and stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a chance you, that your boss is a negotiator and says, you know, he's gonna, he or she's gonna need to feel like they've had some input in it. Mm -hmm. So you would ask for more, right? You know, and and sometimes just because you need something doesn't mean that God doesn't want to give you more. There's mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with you having more than enough. Right. One of His names of God is more than enough. Mm -hmm. But but then you settle down. It's like okay, well, your boss is going. Well, I guess that whatever is not not so bad at all. <laughs> get there, right? And or you may have to leave. I mean, you you may have to leave your place of employment because you're not making enough money. And so you tell them or her, you say um, that um, I need this amount of money to be able to to take care of my family, and this is going on and whatever. And if you can't do this, I totally understand that. But I'm going to have to change my place of employment. I can no longer make widgets for you or make money for you anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a big polarization and it's a, you're pushing the whole thing beyond its limit, but that could be your reality. You may have to go find you something else that meets your financial needs because maybe that business can't do it or not. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden it causes that boss to maybe to look into his, his or her finances more than they ever, never looked before. And they realize, wait a minute, I'm spending a lot of this money on boats and cars and stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I really need this this lady or this man that's done so well. You know, I'm willing to forego. And all of a sudden, that causes them to, to look at areas of their management of the finances of their business they never did before to, to make a yay or nay decision in the context of that, which mm -hmm. either one of them can do that in the context of that. That's not a negative thing because the boss could say, hey, take a hike. Nice knowing you. See ya. Great. Right. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Yeah. And, if, and if you weren't honest, then, you know, you're going to have a bruise in your butt because the door <laughs> the door's going to hit you on the way out, hard, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, uh, but then again, that tension caused him or her to, to kind of look into it. But when you begin to use that tension in, in an evil way, when you try to use it to organize against, to destroy the business, to begin to only think about yourself, to unionize to the point that you're going to struggle and you're going to suck this business and corporation dry just mm -hmm. so you can have your benefits. Right. Now you're looking at a demonic a movement taking place and mm -hmm. it's meant to destroy but when every all the cards are on the table, it's not. So I'm not saying that organizing is wrong, but organizing for the wrong reasons. If you're using tips from Lucifer, pretty much guaranteed this is not good, and you're openly saying that. And so one of the statements in because he quoted, we just heard he quoted in from the rules of rules for radicals and Saul Alinsky's book, and he talks about in his book one of the statements in his books. He says um, that uh, talking about Marxism. He says, you know, Marxists begin, you know, Marx, he began with his prime, the prime truth of that all evil is caused by the exploitation by those who are capitalists. So he polarized immediately and said, okay, those that are being exploited, that's mm -hmm. the North and South, right. the East and West of that is capitalism. So he's polarizing those two aspects of it. This is, I'm reading, I'm just reading a little quote from uh, Sadolinsky's book. Rules for radicals. And from this, this, he logically proceeds to a revolution to end capitalism. So now everybody's been polarized, and this all of a sudden now capitalism is our enemy. 
Now all the other folks that were north and south, they're going to come against the east and the west. Then he says, then he carries it into the third stage of reorganization into a new social order of a dictatorship over the people. Uh So first he polarized them. Uh He got them to fight amongst themselves. The word devil means one who gets in between and divides, by the way, the root of the word. He brings division. Uh Uh, The Lord hates those who cause discord. That's right. And um, so this, so then the mindset of that kind of organization was to, to cause discord to the point where they begin to contend and fight. And then all of a sudden as they're fighting and they're defeating each other, then all of a sudden a dictator would come over them. That's what he's saying. But listen to this. This is the final outcome. And finally, the last stage, political paradise, the political paradise of communism. Marshall Gantz just quoted from Saul Alinsky's Lucifer Tips right. about ultimately communism. Communism is the rejection of God where government is God and man has the ability to, to, to the utopia, the paradise, the political paradise mm. of communism. And we saw communism. We saw firsthand, you know, we had a, 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 um, a Wendy's commercial you could see on, uh, <laughs> on the VFN torch where they would have this lady come out and, um, and she had this gray prison gown looking thing on this right. gray blah. And, uh, it was a fashion show in a communist nation. And so she walks out on the model runway and it's, you know, they said, uh, and the person's announcing and you have all these, uh, Russian generals in the audience down there, you know, and they're mm-hmm. plotting, you know, very orderly according to the, the dictator. And, uh, they said, and next evening there. No, no, I said, no, and next day there. And so, which is they were. And so she marches out in that gray dress with just bland, blandness. Yeah. You know, and it's like everybody's applauding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking down the catwalk of a model. And then, uh, and she was thick like me, by the way. And then she comes back, pretty little like me. Anyway, so then she goes back and then he comes out and he says, and next evening there and then the same lady comes out with a flashlight <laughs> you know what i'm saying with the same clothes the on. same clothes on right and everybody's like hey well, what they're what they were really saying is that's communism right that's how it ends up mm-hmm. if you pull god away i mean just go look at the difference between the dominican republic and haiti it's the same piece of land but the only thing that divides them is where haiti said no to god and their founding where they came what happened was they made a pact with the devil you go to the, the, the just cross over the border there to the Dominican Republic, and all of a sudden you got green, plush, mm-hmm. everything. It's like totally different. it doesn't work. I think fifty percent of the population of Haiti now, I think, is seventeen years old and under. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? And just and it's like the only the answer to that darkness is light. Mm-hmm. Is bringing in the light, and there's a lot of stuff too that didn't just just happen. But so communism is not good. So for us as the church, by the way, Christians, hello. And that's what we're talking to is like, what, what perspective do we have? And the per- perspective that we have is that uh, we don't want to promote an, um, an effort that takes away um, the Republic for which we stand mm-hmm. because it allows us the first amendment rights to be able to worship God freely. That's why we got here. If you have not yet heard America, how we got here and how we stay here, you've got to find out. It was the word of God in the hands of men who met the God of the Bible, who understood that you can be one nation under God if you know God. But if you don't know God, you got to be one nation under a, under a king or, or a tyrant or something because there's no rule. And so we don't want to lose this. Mm-hmm. And so, and so there is communism is not a utopia. I mean, look at Gorbachev and what happened. And you know, when the walls came down, they were just trying to come out of that. Their whole economy crashed and everything. All right. But it's like, it's like we're going right into where other people in the nations are going, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? <laughs> That's what they're saying. They're like, what are you doing? Right. We, know, we're, we wanted to become like you, and you're trying to become like what we're trying to get out of. And then what it is is, understand, it's not a logical thing. It's God turning a nation over if we don't humble ourselves. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that we have jo- Jehoiakim presently leading us, which means God set man. God put a play, man in place to be able to take us and humble us as a mm-hmm. nation and adjust us. And man, we are being humbled rapidly man, are we? as a nation. And if you, if you see Josiah, Jehoiakim, Zedekiah, 
and Nebuchadnezzar, you kind of see our future if we don't repent. As a matter of fact, you can go to VFN TV and listen to Josiah. Mm -hmm. We are Josiah. You can listen to that and get a perspective of what's really going on in the context of that. And so, so here we have, so this organization, this, this organizing that's going on, and he's quoting from Rules for Radicals from Saul Alinsky, and so we want to find out what that is. And, and when you think about it, he says, and this is what he also says in his book, and Robert, and um, I always want to call it Robert's Rules of Wars, <laughs> but it's actually Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, which is interesting. The rules for Radicals is kind of an oxymoron. Anyway, so <laughs> rules? I just anyway. got that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he realized that even, Satan even realizes that if we don't all get along in this evil, it's just not going to work. Right, right. But he was in jail while he was writing it, uh, reportedly. Uh, so he goes on to write, he says, an organizer working in, this is, what he's, this is what he says, an organizer working in and for an open society. Remember that. An open society is in an ideological dilemma to begin with. He does not have to, he doesn't have any kind of fixed truth Truth to him is relative and changing, and everything to him is relative and changing to the extent that he is free from the shackles of dogma. He can respond to the realities of the widely different situations. In other words, there is no yes and no, there is no truth. And so you think about that. And so I want you to remember open society, because that's what we're that's where things are going. And uh it is shocking how fast it's going there because it looks like from as we're beginning to see possible we're being organized. Mm -hmm. Israel's being organized. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.